Good afternoon, everyone. So we are back with another workshop, uh, this time with Mr. Hagberg. Fopa on my account yesterday didn't quite go as to plan with the live. So today, it's take two for us, but first time for you seeing it. Really excited to uh, welcome Alex along to this um, this video. We want to introduce the new X12 23 car from X-Ray. X-Ray always really tell a lovely story to a new car. You know, uh, you sort of start to build the press release, you tell a story, and then it's always released on a Friday with a lovely presentation. Um, obviously, very exciting time for you using it today, for the, probably one of the first times in the competition um, in the UK. So tell us a little bit more about it, Alex. Yeah, so uh, I'm Alexander Hagberg, and I'm involved in the development of this platform. Since a few years, I've been very closely involved in the development, been um, helping a lot with the prototype testing and so on. So it's been very exciting. And um, this year we have the 23 edition, which we come out with a car every year. And I'd like to tell a little bit about the background or the story behind the 23, um, why the car looks like it does now. So it basically started two years ago with a 21 car, which was a completely new car that we released two years ago with a new front end we went to a more robust uh, simpler more efficient more durable front end we got rid of the reactive caster old school front end let's say so we have a different style of front end for the last uh, couple of years we drastically lowered the roll center in the car uh, more than two millimeters which accommodates for the use of solid axles uh, that was a big change as well we came back to the plastic right height inserts for the rear axle, which a lot of customers were happy about because in the past we had shims to adjust the height and it was a bit of a fiddle to, to get it right. So many changes that basically made the car a lot more user friendly and also faster. So the 21 car came out, um, COVID was going on still at the time, we didn't get a chance to race it as much as we wanted to, but for the following year, for the 22 version, we had a couple of refinements made to the battery holder and a couple of other small things that tweak the car. We made it better, but not massively. Uh, but for the 23 version, we can, we can probably say that we have a lot of changes again. Uh, it may not look like it if you just glance at the car, but if you take a closer look, you can really see that there's many news in, in the platform. For example, we have a, a completely new rear pod. Everything's a lot lower and lighter. Everything's been made to have a lower CG so the bulkheads are lower and lighter the, um, the upper plate here which holds the center shock absorber and the side tubes has been lowered a lot so the side tubes now sit on top of the, the brace instead of underneath so as a matter of fact we've lowered the, the brace here by more than six millimeters the side braces had to come down as well so they're really now on the limit to as low as they can be without touching the side links so the whole rear end basically redesigned and furthermore we now have three positions for the center pivot mounting instead of two. So the third position is even further forward which means that you make the rear pod longer and the rear pod helps to, the longer rear pod helps to generate more corner speed. Let's, let's just see that up on the camera there so we can see it on the camera here. The, the third position here. So even further forward with the center pivot makes the rear pod longer and it helps to generate more corner speed mainly on medium to high grip conditions. Uh, I already used this particular um, modification at the Euros in uh, April at Hoodie Arena with good success. And if we move to the center part of the car we have a new battery mounting system now which it has a little carbon piece here in the bottom that mounts onto the chassis. So this carbon piece is supported against uh, the center shock post so it cannot move in a crash so it's a lot more robust so often when you tap a board or something the, the battery tends to shift forward and with this new system it cannot move so that's uh, a lot better with feel and it's also adjustable in steps like in the past you have four steps for the battery position to move it f uh, frontwards or rearwards and that's very a very powerful setting in terms of the setup um, if you move uh, further forward in the car, we have the side braces that I mentioned that they're lower. 
by quite a bit and also we have a new uh, mounting position here another screw here so we used to have just two spots here where you tighten the top thing now we have three and this flex option makes the car stiffer in the front and uh, gives you more steering response and basically the best way I can describe it is that I felt the car more in my hand but right. when I had another post connected there and the flex is super sensitive as you know from your own experience and having another flex option is very powerful and useful for many track conditions and the same goes for the flex in the, the front end the front end remains largely unchanged for this year but one thing we did change was to add another front brace underneath the, the original brace so we have two braces stacked on top of each other in between this uh, stand up here so this flex system again stiffens up the, the front lower arm and gives you better steering response without really making the car harder to drive it just made the car feel um, more direct and more reactive <coughs> and another thing which improved was the front kingpins they're now nickel treated from the factory so they have less friction compared to the, the previous kingpins uh, the previous ones were, were still smooth, don't get me wrong, but these are uh, even smoother. And those are the main updates which I wanted to talk about. There's a couple more updates, not as significant. Um, I almost forgot about the rear right hand inserts for the rear axle. They're now in steps of 0.25 millimeters instead of 0.5 in the past. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, which, is quite, which is quite, I mean, we, we, we glaze over that quickly. Yeah. But that's actually, that's a really big player, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, when you're trying to find those sensitive changes with ride height and, and roll center, you know, those steps of 0.25 make a, make a big difference to being able to get the tires right. Absolutely. So that's um, a really big thing for setting up the car to make it more adjustable and easier to, to work with. And those are all the main things. Um, and and the, the line share of the time with, with the body that you run on the car, AMR, any other? My base setting has been the Proloform AMR in yep. most conditions. That's what I'm the most comfortable with. Yep. Lately I've been experimenting with uh, the Blackheart uh, BA10, okay. which is a bit more aggressive. Well, body shell has more front end. Yep. So for example, on a track like this behind us, yep. where we have a lot of uh, slow corners, the BA10 is a good option because it ha has a, more, a bit more front end on certain sections where the AMR tends to be too, too stable. Gotcha. So gotcha. it's between those body shells. We haven't had much success with the Montec shells on the, on the X-ray car for some reason. We prefer the, the AMR or, or the Blackheart body. And you've run this the pre-production car earlier in the year with, with good, good, good success. Whereabouts did you run that? So I ran the pre-production car in April at the Mile High Indoor Champs in the US, which I ended up winning. And it was a good first uh, experience with the new car or the new, the new parts. Then basically we went into the summer season. We didn't have much uh, chance to really drive or test 12 scale. But when the season started back up in September, I, I did some running with the pre-production car and eventually the, the full production car and been very happy with the performance. So, we, so you've now got yourself the new car, obviously you've come away from the, the touring car season and you're now working back inside. Obviously you'll still be running touring car, but obviously back onto carpet. This week, first opportunity to get into the battle, uh, so to speak. The UK grip, how does that look in relation to the European and the US grip that you experience? Um. It's a little different. Generally, it depends on the carpet. So we have basically three types of carpet that we race on. We have the CRC black carpet, which we have in the U.S., which is uh, quite thick, thick carpet with long hairs, so very high grip, um, traction roll issues, and so on. We have the ETS carpet, which is the opposite, very thin, and short hairs, um, very, very little friction when the car drives on the carpet. Um, generally difficult to find good traction on the ETS carpet with foam tires from my experience and then we have the carpet you have in the UK which is used to be called the Prima felt. I don't know mm -hmm. the exact term um, so again a little bit different I think the car feels the nicest to drive on this type of carpet generally but you have to adapt the setup a little bit in between in general you can run a similar setup on this carpet compared to the ETS carpet but for the US style carpet, you need something rather different to make the car less aggressive and less uh, prone to traction rolling. So for those guys in the UK 
that are going to buy this car, what would be the, the starting points, fundamental starting points that might be really useful to apply to their setups in the UK compared to a US guy, let's say? They're starting, be, they're starting already. They're, they're not. They're not actually. I think there's a little. Uh, <laughs> there's a okay. little malfunction going we on. We have time. We have time. We okay. have time. We have time. Yeah. Um, so I think the, the the starting setup for a UK guy to a US guy with two quite different grip yes. heights. What would be? Give us two start point differences that if you had a start sheet or a setup sheet in front of you with those two guys, what would be three components that you go ah. He's racing in the US. Ah, he's racing in in the UK. Yeah, the most uh, fundamental difference is the chassis plate. Generally, we use the, um, the aluminum flex chassis in Europe, also on UK carpet, which has holes in it, has cutouts, so it's softer. We have the um, the solid aluminum chassis, which is called uh, US spec chassis, which we recommend for the US style carpet. And we sell two different kits for that reason. We sell the US spec and the EU spec. So the EU spec comes with the aluminum flex chassis, the 1.5 degree kingpin, whereas the US spec has solid chassis and only one degree in the front kingpin because you'll want less camber when racing on the high bite surface to have um, less traction roll issues. So in general, you can you can run the aluminum flex <coughs> kit, basically box stock for UK conditions yeah. with decent results. You have to fine tune the setup a little bit depending on the grip levels. But the, the EU spec out of the box generally is a good starting point. Uh, I always post my setups on the um, X-ray forum. You can always have a look, see what I'm running. You yeah. get, usually you can get an idea of something more aggressive than the box stock setup. Yeah. And, and the inception of these spools, what are your, what's your flavor and feel on that? Because obviously you've, you've gone through the full evolution of diffs, gear diffs, and now full spool. Where where are you at with it? What 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 a what do you prefer? And b what are your thoughts on spools going forwards? So when we first started out with solid axles, it was very difficult because the cars were designed and set up for differentials. So we had to change a lot in the setup concept to make cars uh, more drivable with the solid axles. We had to change the roll center, uh, the weight distribution, flex, less flex, basically things like that. Now, the cars we have today, they're designed around the solid axle. So they actually work pretty decent with the solid axle uh, out of the box, even on lower grip tracks. But generally, the, um, the disadvantage is that the setup window is smaller, I feel, with the solid axle compared to the differential. You cannot get away with um, the car being off in terms of setup as much as before. Um, there's a fine line between the car being really good to drive and basically undrivable. That's the headache we have to face. Yeah, and, and, and you obviously your association with, with Hot Race and the, and the wheels and tyres that you use, how has that changed as we've moved towards spools? Because you've got your two, two ranges of tyres now, the yeah. wheels that you, that you run. It didn't drastically change. I mean, we introduced uh, the new compound called Red Dots two yeah. years ago, which was mainly developed for ETS carpet. So it's a more closed cell foam. Uh, has more grip for ATS carpet and the grip usually lasts a bit longer. Um, that in combination with uh, solid axle and ETS carpet was a good combo for us. That's why we released that tire. In the past the Hagberg edition generally worked well everywhere but the red dot kind of grip condition. And do you do much? Yeah. It's not the main business for Hot Race. Hot Race does uh, off-road tires and um, nitro on-road tires. 12 scale is just a small part of their business but Possibly they would like to extend their, their range of tires to mm. something different in the future. Mm. For now, we just have the two compounds, but possibly it will be extended. So you've, so you've turned up here this week, and, and I've, I've been fortunate enough to come over and talk to you, and, you know, as, as many people have here. I always see, when I watch you and your craft, it, it, there's no, never any chaos. You know, so yesterday when there was practice going on, there's always tires ready, no ties out on your on your bench. You know, it always seemed like you were in a flow. It's like whenever you watch anyone do something well, there's never really any stress. They look like it's all in hand. Coming into this weekend, do you get 
tyres trued up and ready for the event? Do you just select what you believe you're going to need and go with that? Or, or how do, what does that look like for you? I go into a race, I try to, if I have the time and possibility, to cut tyres at home. So at least I have tyres sorted for the first day of, of driving, the first day of racing. Uh, yesterday was a busy day with open practice, we did a lot of runs, so I needed a lot of tyres. So I cut a lot of tyres at home, but only for the first day, because gotcha. I also wasn't sure what to expect for the next days, uh, what tyre size to run and so on. So I didn't cut all the tyres for the weekend, just the tyres for the first day. And that's generally the, the method I follow. Right. And, and what? What did you start with today, uh, yesterday? So, so you cut them at home. You, what, what was your front and rear tire size? So I started with uh, 40.5 fronts, 41.5 rears. Uh, I had both Hagbergs and Red Dots prepared. And I tested in between those tires throughout the day with different tire prep methods as well. And uh, in the end, I ended up having to go a bit smaller with the tires when the traction came up. So today I'm running the tires a bit smaller all around compared to, to yesterday. And as traction comes up in general, it's a rule of thumb, you just go smaller, yeah. less roll over of the tyre, less traction roll situations, yeah. that kind of yes. thing. And, and your, your, your uh, additive time is coming down gradually as, a, as an event. I mean, we're at our, I mean, speaking candidly, I mean, we, we've been running out of grip through these runs. Uh, it feels like to me that there is high grip, but yeah, actually, it, it seems to drop off a cliff now of course that's that's a bit of an issue when you're driving a modified car compared to a stock car stock car it's not really happening modified is is a problem what are you trying to do to overcome that is it just your tire prep tire size anything that you can um, share the red dots seem to have less um, pickup throughout the run than the hagberg edition because they are more closed cell foam so there's no room inside of the tire for the the dust to get stuck into the tire. Uh, so, so they lasted longer, they didn't have as much pickup. Uh, tire prep, I've been trying to do quite long uh, rear additive timings in more than one hour, it seemed to work the best. Uh, and then try to adapt the setup to make it more manageable at the end of the run. So if it starts out too aggressive, most likely it will be too hard to drive in the end. Uh, but it's always a trade-off, right? You, you, you start with a car that's too subtle to drive up front, it starts to push in the end, or in this case, you lose rear grip, but it's also understeering. So it's, it's, it's difficult to find a good balance. Um, but yeah, the red dots with very long rear additive timing yeah. seem to work the best. And that's something that people don't appreciate. I, mean, I think that when they watch you go around and good drivers go around, mm -hmm. they go, oh, they're not struggling, they're doing super well. And it's, it, it's, I mean, how often do you go out and go, oh, Nailed it. So for eight minutes, it was perfect. Didn't hear the thing. Car was perfect. I mean, so few, right? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's, it's rare. It's rare that you have a run where you say, oh, the car was perfect, amazing. More often than not, it feels like you're, you're wrestling the car out there, like you're, try, you're hanging on to it. Uh, if you hang on to it well and it's fast, it's like, oh, you can be happy with that run. But it's rare that it feels nice to drive, like for the entire run. Yeah. Uh, and, and people, people, I think really need to, really need to appreciate that. Driving around the car, all of the prep that goes in, all of the knowledge that you're applying, it, it's a, it's a portfolio of knowledge or experience that, that you call upon from all of the years of travelling around. And really, honestly, the, the car, as ever from X-ray, looks truly spectacular. And I think as a package, you know, you as their ambassador, one of their ambassadors. And the package itself, of the quality, it's it's a it's a beautiful work of art, and to see it go around the way it is, it, it's it's wonderful to see. And, I, and it's, this is the first time I've done modified, um, and stood on the stage with you in in in, in the uh, seating heats. My car didn't go so well first run. I pulled off and just watched you, and, and just to see you with the lines and and watching it go down the straight and <laughs> turning in, it's just magnificent. And so anyone out there that hasn't seen Alex race. And, and seeing the X-ray car, I absolutely recommend really going out of your way to see Alex or to see a, a, an X-ray car. It really is very, very good indeed. Alex, thank you so much for your time this week. Thank you. I really had uh, enjoyed having you here. Qualifying starts now. Yeah. Head down. Yeah, should be exciting. Yeah. Should yeah. be very close. So uh, no room for errors. No, as usual, right? Well, you'll catch all of the action. Qualifying starts in about uh, 17 minutes' time. 
So we've got to get Alex out of here. Uh, catch you all on this uh, YouTube channel. If you like this video, hit the like button, share and subscribe with your friends, and we look forward to seeing you all trackside soon. Thank you. Beautiful.